fear is something of the personality, not of the soul. And so my soul is not afraid. So I'm going to lead with that. And I, my intention is to make people happy and hopefully make a good impression and not like have my dress like fly open on. It's too tight <laughs> is what happened. It's too small. <laughs> and I'm scared, but um. I also think it would be absolutely hysterical. So. Welcome to the Lone Star Play Podcast. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. Join me and a famous guest. We discuss their career, life, food, Texas, and everything in between. Let's get started. The Lone Star Play Podcast is produced by TexasRealFood.com. Find out more at the end of this episode. Hi, guys, and welcome to another episode of the Lone Star Play Podcast. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. Let's jump in. Our guest today is Lee Nash. She is famous for being in the band Sixpence, None the Richer. They sang uh, famously Kiss Me. Uh, I was in a movie, She's All That. Remember that song? Kiss me beneath the milky twilight. Kiss me. That is the worst impression. Did you hear that, guys? That's why I don't sing, y'all. Okay? Kiss me. You got to give it that little... Um, I, I will never do that again. I apologize. All right. Yes. Phenomenal singer. She's amazing. She's got a new album out. Um, it's called The Tide. Amazing collaborations. Uh, it's coming out in two parts. There's a great song called uh, God Gave Me Horses. We talk about it in here. Uh, such a great song. I love it so much. She got a new tour. She's playing the Grand Old Opry for the first time. Um, so we talk about that. Her new tour, the new music she's got coming out, some of her favorite artists that she's listening to right now. And also, I get her take on the Joe Rogan, Spotify, uh, Neil Young, Joni Mitchell situation. So stick around. Lee Nash. It's a great interview. But first, let's get a word from our sponsor, Texas Real Food. Got to keep the lights on, y'all. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm here to tell you about TexasRealFood.com. It's a great website where you can find local farm fresh food in Texas. Just enter your zip code, okay? It'll bring up Texas farms and ranches, farmers markets, farm to table restaurants, and more that are around you. It's really easy to use. Also, if you think there's a business that should be on the list that isn't on there, let us know. We'll get them added. As well as being able to enter your zip code and find all the great places around you, we also have great recipes, cooking techniques. You can learn about food and Texas food specifically um, and local food events that are happening in Texas. So it's a great website aside from that. And it also features, of course, the Lone Star Plate podcast that it produces. Um, we've also got some other features as well, like Food for Thought, Fresh from the Kitchen, Tasting Texas, the Texas Mom Blog, Real Food, Promptuary, a lot of great resources about Texas, all things Texas, focusing on Texas farmers and ranches and, you know, real food, y'all. Okay, so anyway, please go to TexasRealFood.com right now and begin your Texas journey for great food. All right, back to the show. Before we get back to our main interview, here is a 30-second snippet of a YouTube exclusive highlighting local Texas movers and shakers. Here is Yolanda Nagy out of Austin, Texas. Check out the full interview on our YouTube channel, Lone Star Plate. We'll put a link in the description. Enjoy. When I told them that I had a podcast, nobody in the foodie industry really knew what it was. But I would try and interview these foodie people, and they were like, well, you know, when you get kind of famous, uh, just call us. You know, I'm like, really? I didn't even, you're famous? <laughs> I didn't know you were famous. I'm just, you know, I'm just asking you to come on and talk about food, you know? But when I went to the farmer's market, man, they were just like, yeah, I'd love to talk to you. You know, we love to share what we have, you know, and stuff. And uh, and then I realized they needed to be heard. All right, guys, thanks for sticking with us. Please follow us on social media. Search the Lone Star Play TX. We're on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. And if you're watching on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be notified of all the new content we put out every week. We break down the episode into clips. All right, guys. Let's jump into this episode. Lee Nash, amazing 
absolutely hilarious, by the way. Get ready to laugh, y'all. Lee Nash. Enjoy. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Uh, yeah, I'm glad we got to put this together. We've been trying since December. I know. Uh, be, right? Beginning of December. Yeah. Yes. yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me back. How was how was Dr. Peter Hotez? Did that happen yet? Yeah, yeah. I did it yesterday. Um, and Dr. Elena Botazzi, both of them worked wow. on it e- equally. Uh, yeah, it was, it was, they were amazing. They were? They were yeah, they were amazing. They answered everything, you know. They were just so game, right? Yeah. For every just let's do this. Let's 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 break some myths. Let's right. let's get some people vaccinated, you know. I gotta I gotta watch that. Yeah, I it's gonna be a good one. Watch right. Or it, it's, it's not out yet. It'll be out uh, Thursday. Okay, cool. It'll be out this Thursday. And actually what I did um with that for everyone listening to, um well um I what I did, Lee, this was really cool. So I have a few friends, well, quite a few friends that have not been vaccinated. I have not excommunicated them from my life. They're they're still my friends. So I've been talking to them for months and months. um, And I said, okay, look, guys, I'm having these doctors on. This is a real opportunity for you all to ask some real questions and get some real answers. So I did a panel over the weekend with them. And we talked about all the reservations and any questions they had. And then I presented some of that to the doctors. So smart. Right. And then what we're going to do is those guys are going to watch that episode on Thursday. We're going to meet again over the weekend, talk about it, see if, see if some things changed. Who knows? Wow. What a great idea. I love that. And it's not just for them, right? They represent a lot of people listening in on the podcast. So that's wonderful. Well, uh, man, kudos for getting those, those doctors on. I, yes. I respect uh I respect them very much. That's awesome. Have- yeah, me too. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yeah, they're they're ch- I mean, they literally will be have their footprint in history. Yep. Absolutely. Like it's cra- it's crazy like to wrap my you know brain around that. It's like y'all don't even know the impact y'all have made like to save no. literally millions comfort. upon millions of I, I lives. Mean, every yeah, everything. I, I've looked to them for comfort, information. Yeah, I trust them, and yep. that's a really big deal when you're scared. So, yeah, I agree. I agree, a hundred percent. Well, Lee, how was your Christmas? How how did everything go over the holidays? Um, I know, you know, everything was spreading around. Omicron was was yeah. out and about, but uh, did you have a, a good holiday? We did. We we did. It was just us, just the three of us. My son turned 18 right after Christmas. So oh, he's wow. like one of those babies that has to share um <laughs> his birthday with the Lord Jesus. Um but but uh he you know he we had a great a great um Christmas. It was quiet. Um and so yeah, it was really, really nice. My grandmother passed away a few days into January, like on oh. the third. And she would have been 98 that. on January 20th. So it's been a really like auspicious time, if that makes sense. Um, just a lot of um, a lot of turnover. You sure. know, when someone passes that that that's that big a part of your life. Um, it seems like, I don't know, something cracks open for a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm so sorry to hear that. My best to you and your family. Thank you. Um, well, she certainly is, was happy to hear. <laughs> she was yeah. so ready to go. <laughs> really? Yeah. 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 She's to like, a, I live my to, life. Right. Yes, <laughs> to a funny point. She kept asking me on the phone, Lee, when you get up there, would you please ask Jesus why I'm still here? <laughs> and I was like, you understand that means I have to die. Right? Yeah. I, 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 Grandma, I got to go first. Like, That's not, yeah. <laughs> But sure thing, man, I'll ask. Um, but uh, yeah, but my mom was with her and and it's been great for my mom. And um, but yeah, she was one of the greatest Texas women ever to uh, be born and live a life there. I will say that for her. That's awesome. Well, hats off. Moment of silence to uh, to her. Absolutely. What was yeah. her name? Ruby Woolley. Ruby Woolley. Wow. Phenomenal. Well, we're going to dedicate this podcast to Ruby. Thank you. I love Thank that. You. That's awesome. So you've gotten into the new year. I know you've got a new tour coming up pretty soon, yeah. right? And the first gig 
It's pretty badass. It's kind of say. a big deal. Yeah. Kind of a big deal. Yeah. Kind of a big yeah. deal. I'm pretty nervous. Yeah. I'm playing uh, the Opry for the first time um, on Friday. So uh, I, I spoke every day. I've, you know, spoken a new, well, and a clear intention. And, um, you know, because I tend to get pretty nervous in like really big buildings. <laughs> <laughs> um, so but i'm not um so i i know i just did speak that into the universe but i haven't until just now and i'm like take even back. if you're not performing in that building if it's just a big building you're nervous yeah uh, yes. uh, no, that's a good point that's a good point patrick no if i was sitting in the audience even sometimes like if it's high ceilings or it's yeah it's just big spaces there's a yeah. there's there's a fear for that I get it. Yeah, but fear is fear is something of the personality, not of the soul. And so my soul is not afraid. So I'm going to lead with that. And I, my intention is to make people happy and hopefully make a good impression and not like have my dress like fly open on. It's too tight <laughs> is what happened. It's too small. And I'm scared, but um, I also think it would be absolutely hysterical. So, well, that too. I'll that wear good. Too. Yeah, that too. That's funny. Yeah, I mean, it a is, great start on this. Right, podcast. right. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I mean, that is a power. That would be a powerful way to make a statement there at the right. old Opry, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, a absolutely. good bad impression or a bad good impression. Yeah, I think it's um, in a way, it might be good that it's like the first one. You know, yeah, I don't yeah. know. I, was that on purpose or I mean, you're playing like 10 to 12 gigs, something like that. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I wish it was more and it would be. I mean, uh, this is kind of a strange time because Henry, my son's about to graduate in May. So I've intentionally kept a lot of space open. Got but it. June, okay. June will be really packed with shows. And I'm bringing my mom with me on that tour. Oh, and wow. Uh, ho hopefully Henry, but Henry uh, might have an internship or something. I don't know. So, yeah, so we'll see, but I'm excited to bring my mom with me. That's exciting. So the tour that you'll have this summer, she's, she's going to come along. Was that her choice? Your choice? Both uh, choice? Well, my choice. And also this band, this family called the Canaans that live up in the North, uh, the Northeast. I did a show up there, just the most delightful um, they have a pub downstairs in their home, um, and they built it, you know, just for family, you know, to go down and it looks like an Irish pub. It's unreal. Like you oh, open, wow. like it's, I think they used to what run liquor down there and stuff back in the, what would that be? Prohibition like era. Prohibition era. Yeah. The twenties. The twenties. Maybe. Okay. So it, was, it, it looks like that down there, and it, it it was that. And anyway, one of the brothers, wow. there's like 10, 10 brothers and a couple of sisters. I don't know. <laughs> They're like this little house in the family type, type. Uh, I mean, prairie type family. And um, they have become obsessed with my mother. <laughs> <So> <laughs> during the show, what? they kept yelling. I think I told a story about her. And they kept screaming, bring mom back, bring mom back. Wow. This particular little town they live in. Um, is one of her favorite places in the world, and she only got to visit once. Um, so I'm bringing mom back. It's <laughs> it's great. kind of it's sort of a must. I, I think they would probably not let me play if I didn't have her with me. So yeah, you show up. Uh, where's mom? Where's your mom? Yeah, yeah. where's your mom? Yeah, thank you, <laughs> Lee. We're we're happy you made it, but yeah, but. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Is this the first time your mom has gone with you like this on a tour or yes, it will you? be. Oh, yeah. really? After yeah. all this time? After all this time. Wow. It makes okay. her sad to see me play. It's weird. It makes her... Really? Sad. Yeah. That's yeah. interesting. What's her reasoning behind that? You know, I am a mother, and it's still hard for me to understand, but I think a lot of the songs, you know, are the, the contents of them oh, okay. are very personal and, and sure. nothing to do with her. Sure, um, sure a lot about my dad but um he was awesome too but um but yeah i think a lot of it she's like uh oh, can i just stay at the hotel or like she's just <laughs> afraid of afraid of getting like super vulnerable in front of in front of a bunch of people which i totally understand happens Absolutely. to be my superhero i mean super power 
<laughs> I swear I'm not drunk. I'm not high. I'm not high. I, I had to wear a hat because I braided my hair. I don't let's you have another question. <laughs> You would not believe what is under this hat right now. Girl, I feel the same way about my hair. I can't Your get it to go right. It's what? It's like crazy. it's like all over the place all the time. I, no. I have a hat. Look, I brought a hat. I was like, okay, am I doing the hat? Am I doing the hat? No, I don't it know. It's so good. You've got Andy Garcia hair. It's perfect. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Andy Garcia I know. hair. Wow. I That's, I've never heard that. I like that a lot. You have it. Claim it. Name it and claim it. What happened to that guy? That guy's amazing. Yeah, I know he's one of my favorite actors. I don't he know. Is. He's probably resting his <laughs> laurels. <laughs> resting on his laurels. <laughs> resting, I don't Maybe know. Maybe they're resting on him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I love it. This is great. I'm so glad you're on here. To, Thanks to, for that having we're talking. Me back. Yeah, this is awesome. <laughs> this is awesome. You know, you have this. Man, I got to tell you something. So I just, I've been listening on repeat to the, I know you have a, there's more, there's more songs that you released, but this one right. song in particular, I can't get enough of, um, God gave me horses. Thank you. The, the, the tide sessions, right? So it's called the tide, this album you released in August, right? Or September? R September. Yes. September. Okay. Um, that song. Oh man. Well, that's a, that is a, that line. Um, the state gave me 18 months. God gave me horses. I got to say, I mean, I wrote that down. That's probably one of the best lines I've heard in a song. And I, I don't know when I, I, can't, I, I can't straight from the above. I, it it's really, such a good line. I mean, it's so well delivered. It's such a beautiful song. And that tide session, this like unplugged, like, oh, man, so good, Lee. Thank really. you. Thank you so much. I'm really proud of it and uh, everything that I've been able to achieve with this company um, has really been just such a, a corner that I didn't, I wasn't expecting. I thought I was just going to be here all year and I have been, but I've been able to work, you know, from home and, and record songs that are so important to me um, and, and just like build something, even though it's a year of my son's graduating Instead of sitting around, like, sort of hearing the ticking of the clock, I can be busy and creative. And that's something I'm really, really grateful for. Yeah, that's awesome. Is I mean, it, this, this, um, you hadn't put out music for like six years or so, right? Well, before that, according to Wikipedia. So, I, you no, know, no, I don't know right. how right that is all the time. There may have been a few singles. But yeah. No, yeah, you're right. No, not a, like a, a, a record. And I know this is just a half a record, but the next half is going to be pretty, pretty stunning, I must say. Yeah, but and this I first, if this is just a, you know, half of a, re it's amazing. I mean, Thanks. it's like, wouldn't that be better than a full record of nonsense? Yes. I think, right? Yes. Quality. Yes, but there will but be. Volume Another two. volume yeah. two. So let's talk about who the collaborators are that you brought on for this first first one here that that's out right now that people can listen to. Okay, who did you, who did you I've bring got, on? I've uh, got Cece Winans, who it's is just just I mean, uh, one of my favorite people and voices in the world, and Ruby Amanfu, who I really love as well. My husband Stephen Wilson Jr uh on a song we wrote together called made for this about <laughs> we were about to kill each other and we sat down and wrote a song instead which was a better choice it's a better choice. better better choice better yeah. choice <laughs> um and then um vince gill holy cow and wow hanya tucker was a highlight <laughs> wow um trying to think who am i who am i missing uh uh Am I missing anything? I don't. I don't think so. I think so. that was it. Yeah. 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 That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. So each song is like you're paired with somebody. Is that the idea? Well, we we you know we factored in. All right, this the song we've got. Like who would, who would be a good match? And so for never again, every time Tanya Tucker was like the perfect um, archetype. You know, yeah. like there isn't, yeah. she is the archetype. 
Yeah. Um, so <laughs> totally. uh, having her was absolutely perfect. And I can't think of anyone more gentle spirited and obviously gifted uh, than Vince Gill to join me on God gave me horses um, because that song um, came from an experience where I, I met a prisoner. I don't know if we talked about this last time, but I, I don't think so. I, I'm, I went to an agricultural center with my best friend and we were um, looking at the horses and she brought her dog and it's something that she makes a habit of because she lives right down the street. And she kind of made me go that morning and I was like, Ugh, I really don't want to. And I went with her and we're looking at these beautiful animals. And I remember it was cold because this man came out of the barn and he was wearing a, a jacket. So we couldn't instantly tell that he was wearing a uniform, like a prison uniform. And, um, and so he, he just came out of the barn and started talking to us and telling us about his life and why he was incarcerated. Um, and the fact that, you know, he, when he's, I guess, on good behavior, the, the cops there would let him come and work with the horses and how it was, it had healed him. I mean, he said a lot of the lines that are in the song, I mean, really most of them. Um, wow. But by the time I got to the car that morning, I had the state gave me 18 months. God gave me horses because you could see it all over his face. I mean, yeah. and he said, he talked about his dad. He talked yeah. about the hardest part, you know, was, was just missing his wife. And, um, you know, so his vulnerability led to this, this song, you know, that's touching a lot of people. And um, unfortunately, he hasn't been able to hear it uh, that I know of yet. So, oh, really? Yeah, we we gave copies to all of the police people that work there. Um yeah. and they were very appreciative and they love the song. Um love it. But um but they said that that um this man um his name is Dwayne um can hear it when he's ready to hear it. And I was like, "Well, it seems like any time is right is like the right time for something like this, but maybe that'll maybe inspire him to, you know." The, right. Uh, <laughs> But I'm thinking he may have re like reoffended or something. But sure. they won't. I can't. I haven't been able to get much information. But but there, there's. I do have in my mind, Dwayne being like really, really tall, dark haired. There's something about Vince Gill and his beautiful vulnerability, and this guy Dwayne, um, and his vulnerability. That I don't know. It just made it made so much sense. And then when. Ben said yes. And that's what it was. It was just a series of yeses that I couldn't believe. And wow. it made for this project that I just, yeah, I, I'm so proud of it. That's, uh, that's amazing. That's amazing. So when is the volume two coming out or is that public or you're not allowed to talk about that? I don't know. No, I, I think I could just guess. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your guess couple, is the best one so I you know. record, i've recorded once one song already and then two will get done lord willing next week and then i've got a little bit more writing to do um but uh i believe what have they said i think end of summer it might be the same thing like a year later okay so, okay right on yeah that's September, good september august september but I'm, yeah. um, yeah, I couldn't be more excited about what's coming. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I wish hey, I could talk about that. You said you have a little more writing. Is it all the songs are done and you're tweaking or you still have full songs to. I probably, I mean, I, I, I have a lot of songs in my head that I just gotta, I gotta get out. Um, yeah. anyway, just for my sanity, whether they're good enough to go on this project. I don't, I don't know yet, but, um, but yeah, there's just so much housework to be done. <laughs> Is that it? That's what's holding I live it up. With two dudes, and I know a lot of people do. You know, you guys, you're you're everywhere. Yeah. But <laughs> some of some, <laughs> some of you are just you know We're everywhere. I can't yeah. believe the things that I see in this house every day, and and I look at my it's you know, and and Henry's 18 now. He doesn't have an excuse. I mean, I guess he could say his mom didn't teach him, but that's not true. <laughs> so I just gotta, I gotta square away. I really have to 
prioritize my time, um, which I'm not really great about that. But yeah, I've got some writing to do. There you go. You got some writing to do. Um, do you know, is it, are you one of these people that, um, like if your house is out of order, you feel like your life is out of order. Mm -hmm. is that, it, are you in that? Is that mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I can't, and it keeps me from doing the next thing. I like, see. Yeah. I, I can't see a clear path to that guitar. Like I can see the guitar. Sure. But, and I, and then I get caught up in this, you know, after COVID thing where I, I don't know if you feel this way, but I get so tired that it feels like if I don't fall asleep, I'm just going to die. Do you yeah. get, do you, are you napping? I don't know how I long nap. it's been. I nap, but I've always, I've napped for quite a while because of living in Spain. Oh, because you know how to nap, right? It's sort of built into the culture and yeah. it's and stuck quick, with me for a long time. Nap. Yeah. Yeah. It, typically, you're not trying to. I would say it depends how old you are. So here, here's the deal. If you're in Spain, typically younger people will sleep like 30, 45 minutes. Right. If you're older, right, if it's grandpa or grandpa, they might sleep an hour and a half, yeah. two hours, like legitimately. I'm, you I'm, know? I'm sleeping as long as I freaking can. Yeah, me too. I kind of just go to sleep and then I wake up and I kind of have two days in a day, if that makes sense. Yes, yes. You know, yes. that nap really separates my day in half. Yeah. And I exactly. feel like I have two days because I have exactly. two mornings. After I wake up from the nap, I, I'm having a second morning. <laughs> it, right? Like, it's like. <laughs> but the light looks different here. Yeah, exactly. I and I wake up and it's dark. I'm like, what have I not done? Like, is that Henry is a, yes, yes. Is he alive? Right. <laughs> is he alive? <laughs> I'm trying like, where, so what hard. What day to, is it? Yeah. I know exactly. Like, I, what did I miss? I didn't feed him dinner. <laughs> like, he's not a freaking adult. Golly, I'm such a helicopter mom, but I'm working on it. Oh, he's man. This kid is, I mean, it's like a, I didn't do it, but he's turned into this like Liam Neeson super stoic character he's oh huge. wow he's serious he's smart he wants to go into i don't know what doesn't like me to talk about it um <laughs> he wants to go into like either the like fbi cia nsa i was actually going to ask you that what are his plans yeah. of, of going for that's cool yeah. man that's he's a cool thing to want to do you know I think so. Both my my mom's brothers were in the CIA and the NSA, and they spoke fluent Russian and Spanish. And oh, my wow. son speaks Spanish. He's taught himself Russian, um, so he can like read it. But his class load has gotten so difficult the last year and a half that he's really kind of put that to the side. And I'm not sure he's as interested in getting all up in the Russian situation with by knowing the language sure you're definitely saying i'll help <laughs> and i'm not sure he wants to get involved in all that it's a mess um so anyway but i i just i gotta learn on i learn about you know letting go so the Susie Bogus song right Ooh, letting go you, you know that song no it's been no uh I've had 18 years to get ready for this day. Oh, it's it'll just kill you. Oh man. Oh Did gosh. I just keep singing I'm not a parent, you know. I I I don't it's tough for me to like my brother right. has kids, I have nephews. I the amount I feel for them, right. I can't imagine what the parent right like because the love I have for them is insane. So for the parent right for my brother, I can't even I mean I can't fathom it. Uh -uh. It it's must be well, you can. I mean, I feel very deeply for my niece and nephew as well. So I could get worked up because my nephew oh, just 17 yes. and I'll feel the same way about them. I call I, when I, I would kill somebody for them. Le legitimately, yeah, I, I would. Have, you know what I mean? I would do I anything for them. Yeah. No, I have. I mean, with my niece in the grocery store, like step to men that were looking at her like, excuse me, excuse me. That's I right. I know she's pretty, but you better get away from her because um, oh, she was yeah. like. 13 at the time i just oh have a niece that looks like she's 30 and a really good looking 30 i don't know <laughs> good what looking 30 you're like not a bad looking 30 it's like a, i know it's a good why didn't 30. i even say 20 i mean i i just feel <laughs> scared about age these days i don't know if i'm trying to make myself feel younger or just it's i just feel like 
I guess since my demographic now is, you know, because I'm a 70s Hill, Hill Country girl, um, being like being 45, I, everything's going, everything <laughs> that's attractive to me is older now. So I guess yeah. that's why I went all the way up to 30. She really looks like a, a gorgeous 20 year old, but she's only 14. That's terrifying. Gosh, you know, they always say every generation, like, oh, kids look older, right? Every, did they right. say, I don't know. I feel like I don't feel I like that was look, the case when I was younger. Yeah. I did not look that way I at all. And it's not her. She, it's not her fault. She's just tall and she happens to be really beautiful. Um, it's not her fault. It's just the way she looks. She doesn't wear makeup. She doesn't need to. Yeah. <laughs> hey, looking, looking, uh, you know, as you get older, right, that's only going to benefit her, I think. Um, I always oh. had a baby face. Uh, so as I got older, I still looked young, you know, yeah. it, it didn't matter how. But as I got older, that helped me. Yeah. I think. Um, I don't know. Because you, you get know, more I, distinguished looking, like, especially oops. with men and, and you know, women, too. I just think, like, the less, the less, like, you fuss with makeup, the more youthful you look. That's what hey, my I'm sister and I have always that's our credo. <laughs> yeah, that's your credo. Yeah. Less is more, right? Yeah. That's uh yeah, that's my motto in the kitchen. Listen, I get yeah. it. I yeah. Get it. Have you been able to I know you're it's your podcast, but have you been able has anything changed in that realm for you as far as restauranting, cooking? Um chefing? Not really. I mean, to All be honest with you, I, okay. I really have no desire to get back into that really? at the moment. I mean, I do yeah. sometimes. I'm not going to lie. There's moments where, God, I would love to be on the line. I'd love to be creating a menu, cook, you know. Right. But then I think of all the other stuff that comes with it that I just am not ready to get back into yet. But yeah. I'll never say never. That's, That's for sure. Good. That's good. It's you healthy. Know. Yeah, yeah, good. for sure. I, I mean, I have a lot of concepts and ideas and projects, and I think really it'll just come down to right moment, right time, right partnership. You know what? I'm oh. ready. Let's, let's do this. Let's, uh, yeah. we have this idea, this concept. There's a, there's a hole in the market where I would be at, where I could say, okay, this, this could work, yeah. you know, let, let's do well, this. Maybe, I don't know. What if you, what, did you grow up in Spain? No, no. I grew up in you Texas. You just lived there for a while. Yeah. Yeah. I just lived there. Maybe you open a restaurant in Spain. I've thought about it. Trust me, for sure. That 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 has definitely come about. I've thought about doing American food over there because yeah. nobody does. Some people do American food over there, and it's just done really bad. Well, I wonder what Spain would think of Tex-Mex. Is that already a, like? Is that no? Sort of, it's not over there at all. And it's um, probably not over there on purpose. <laughs> you know, <laughs> if it was done that? right, they would like it. The problem yeah, is, like, it's not done right those? there. Yeah, right. yeah, they don't like a tortilla to them is is eggs and onion and potato that's a tortilla to them sounds pretty good but not the same thing yeah you know? yeah it's not the same thing at all I, I think they would like it um spanish people like spanish food right that's how europe is really if yeah. when you're in italy they they really like their food i mean right. it's hard to find other things right. um maybe you find like the northern african influence so you've right. got moroccan food and things right. like that so they'll right. get into that kind of stuff. But yeah. otherwise, it's it's like their thing. Like, yeah. that's all they want. I don't know. It's tough. That's why I'm always like, man, America, y'all want y'all think we just eat McDonald's? That is not we true, like man. We everything. We have yeah. everything here. It's so diverse. I tell people mm -hmm. that all the time. I, Hey, man, the food is more diverse in America than Europe. I'm sorry. It just is. It, is. it just is. Because we yeah. come from everywhere. Exactly. And all, so all the influences have gotten into the, into the pot. Yep. That's it. The That's pan. it. Absolutely. Yeah. No, the pot pan. No, that all works. Hey, we cooking it all. I'm gonna try uh, to talk about drugs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Say no. Say that's no. My, that's my motto. To not all of, of them, maybe. No, but most all. Uh, all yes. Yeah. <laughs> Ninety nine point nine percent of them. <laughs> yes. 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 Absolutely. Um, okay. You know, what I was gonna ask you about is. Um, I, I don't know if you want to talk about it, so if you don't, it's all good. But the Spotify thing that's going on right now, like Neil Young, Joni Mitchell, they're pulling their music from Spotify because of Joe Rogan, right? Having, quote unquote, misinformation on his podcast. And I'm a podcaster. You're a musician. 
this I feel like we could have this conversation. Um, I'm curious your thoughts on on this. Well, I'm just uh, there's no doubt like in the arts and in compensation for the output that we do. You know, you it's not fair. It just isn't. But it's something that has been. I mean, either you're forced to play the game or you take it off. You know, you take it off like uh, Neil Young and Joni Mitchell did, which I think is completely badass. Um, And I guess I want to say it's because they can, but um, so (laughs) they earned that spot. And that's amazing. Um, And then as far as Joe Rogan goes, I mean, I'm, I'm all about free speech, but yeah, it gets really dicey when you start telling people not to get vaccinated or you're spreading information. And I appreciate his response has been that I'll try to make it more even as far as the information that I'm spreading, but it's obvious what, you know, what the people that listen to his podcast, which I have been one of them at times. I'm like, there's, he's got guests that I'm interested in listening to that I think are really interesting. Um, But yeah, I mean, he, he needs to be more responsible, but what I'm, what I keep hearing is he doesn't need Spotify right? They need him more than he needs them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a, it's, it sucks, but I feel like I've been living in this, um, place where I've kind of known, Hey, this is not going to be fair anymore since Napster. And I was, you know, hearing about that and the label that I was on at the time, Terry McBride from network up in Canada was pro pro napster because he i think he saw he's a bit of a visionary i guess i can give him that um he saw this is where it's going anyway so let's get in and let's lean into it let's lean into it and and i I think we've leaned into it way too hard and 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 then i see people like in my own town like this guy steve bogard who's a who's a, a great songwriter um and i think he's um it's like the president of uh, the songwriters something or other here in uh, in Nashville, but he and a bunch of people, they worked so hard just to get a few more rungs on the ladder and, and make the songwriters, you know, kind of not just lose across the board, but it took so much. And he's like one guy. And I, I know he's not the only one that's fought for things, but, yeah, it just feels like this behemoth issues that artists are going to have. And and then I start getting sad and thinking, well, maybe with all the garbage going on in the world, people are just not even going to want art or music anymore. Oh. And then I hear the opposite. Um, I think I was listening to NPR yesterday and yeah, just hearing people experiencing concerts again. And yes, it absolutely is essential. It's an essential part of our our makeup as, as these spirits that we are. So it's not going anywhere. I think it should be more fair, but it's, it is what it is for now. Yeah, absolutely. No, I appreciate your, your take on it. Absolutely. Um, yeah, it's interesting to hear all some musicians coming out and defending Spotify all of a sudden. I thought was int- I was like, wait a second. I thought Spotify musicians hated Spotify. <laughs> like, what? Right. Where did this change all of a sudden? Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, for Joe Rogan, I was like, wait a second. Um, you can still defend Joe Rogan, but not like Spotify. If right. you know, you know, right? Yeah. They're the big giant. You know, yeah. and feel like a peon, and if. You know, if I'm Taylor Swift and she's done her, I mean, she's done some big things trying to help. And, you know, it just, yeah, it's, it's really, it's, it's really unfair. Um, And the only thing we've got going for us uh, is just what we bring to the table, which people apparently love. (laughs) Um, Hopefully. um, Yes. Yes. Music. Absolutely. Um. So it was just got to go with the flow and see, see what happens. But yeah, I don't know what the actual current status is with Joe Rogan. Like, has he been absolved or? Um, well, so I'll give a quick run through of the story for, you know, for people yeah. listening as well that may not know about. So 
originally, um, yeah, Neil Young and um, Joni Mitchell pulled their music because Joe Rogan had had um, Dr. Robert Malone and Stephen McCullough, I believe his name, Dr. Stephen McCullough, both on, and they both are known for spreading quote unquote misinformation about, you know, COVID-19 and the vaccine. And, mm-hmm. you know, they may have their own little theories or whatever. So he, they come on, they, they talk and yeah, people got upset. So they wanted to pull their music. Joe came out and said, you know, what you said earlier, Hey, I'm going to try to balance this out and have go. And I appreciated him saying that. I think that was the right thing to say personally. Um, and then another video comes out of a compilation of him saying the N word, just boom, 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 oh, boom, I boom, boom, about boom. That. Yeah, yeah, that was intense. I'm not going to lie. I, I watched that and it was like, I didn't see that. Can't defend that. There's no way. And I'm sorry. I don't know why these people are like, ah, uh, you know, it, it's out of context. It's out of what? That, well, there's no, should, there's, there is no context. For that's that. what I mean. Exactly. There yeah. is no con. I'm sorry. It's just not, um, it, he knew it too. That gives the, the video Joe Rogan released, I appreciate that video too. I'm not going to lie too, because he's look, Hey, that did not look good. You're right. That was wrong. Yes. Yeah. You're thank you, dude. Yeah, you're right. And I think, um, at this point, he's just going to have to deal with this rapid fire sort of, Hey, we're going to call you out on these things that add up over time. Right. You know, I don't think it's done. I think some more, th- some more compilations of other things are probably going to come oh, I'm out. Sure. I'm sure they will. I have, you know. I, I don't think I could stand to even listen to that. And I, Oh no, I, I, if I, I listen, stopped I it halfway through him again. And, and I do, I think he's such a smart man and I respect that he's interested in knowing more about the world, but I think you can, I mean, the, the, the other thing is just garbage, but, um, you know, he has shed light on some cool topics, but, uh, I'm probably down with Joe Rogan. <laughs> yeah. It's tough, man. It's a tough, um, you know, being a podcaster myself, he- here's what I can agree with him on certain things that he said when he said like, look, if you're going to pour through all the thousands of hours I've spoken, you're going to find things that I said that whatever. And I can, I can see that point. If someone right. were to go through all 200 episodes of the Lone Star Plate, maybe they could find a few things that I said that maybe could whatever. I mean, I personally don't think so. I'm pretty cool. I don't really say <laughs> anything too crazy, right. but who knows? Maybe yeah. that could be possible. So, okay. I, I can see that. But at the end of the day, he has a responsibility, whether he likes it or not. Sorry. You, you, right. you reach too many people. You do have to be aware of the the content that's going out i'm sorry it's just how it is it's just a responsibility he's gonna have to suck it up and and deal with it and right. yeah he's gonna he's gonna lose some people over this for sure um oh yeah you know without a doubt uh i kind of stopped listening to him a while ago to be honest I with you too. yeah you know I do. I, but i i i it concerns me my son listens to him but a lot of my my he's got a really good head on his shoulders and so I think he can parse out, you know, Absolutely. Himself, you yes. know, what I believe what, that's how you fight misinformation. Crash. I, I yeah. don't believe in deplatforming just or pulling off. Away. I, right. I believe just you do another podcast that mm-hmm. combats that. That's how you fight it. Because the moment you start trying to put, in my opinion, right, uh, the moment you start trying to pull away, one, it just makes people search that thing out that you're mm-hmm. saying don't listen to. Mm-hmm. Right. And Second, we're not, you know, three things. Second, we're not giving people the benefit of the doubt that they're smart enough to discern between this information. Right. Hold, hold up. Let, let's give people that they're smart. You know, most of us are pretty intelligent. Right. Uh, and third, it's just a slippery slope. Who's going to mm-hmm. decide those things? So uh, to maybe right. just have a line in the sand, you know, and but Spotify's a business. They have a right to say, hey, we don't want to have this on. So that's different. That's not breaking your that's- freedom of speech. I'm sorry. Right. No. Um, and the same thing with Neil Young and Joni Mitchell. I heard some musician come out and say, oh, uh, oh, I thought they used to fight for freedom of speech back in the si-. Uh They are. That's what right. they're, they pro- they're are. protesting. They're still right. doing it. Yeah, they're putting their right. money where their mouth is literally. Uh, that didn't make any. I mean, it's literally a protest. They yeah. didn't say you need to pull Joe Rogan down and, and leave it at that. They said it's me or him. My choice. Right. What do you want? Right. 
Yeah. Hey, I respect that. Yes, I, I respect that. So, yeah. yeah. You know, Me for too. those saying yeah. that. Yeah. It is. It's a censorship and all that you were just talking about. It's a slippery slope to book burning, which we're yeah. also seeing that kind of garbage happening. So, I don't know. It's a, it's tough, right? It's, 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 it's tough. It's a new Look, day every day. I stay in my zone. I do my thing here. I try to help the people that I can. And, right. you yeah. know, that's what I focus on, you know, yeah. and having oh, wonderful people like you on to have these wonderful conversations. Thank you. Um, let's talk a little bit about this tour because people listening, we're going to put this out right in time for that happening. So, you know, you got the, you got the Grand Old Opry. That's the, the first one that's, that's coming up. Um, yes. And after that, you're kind of, you're moving around quite a bit, to be honest with you. Are there any other ones you're super excited about um, you're looking forward well, to? I, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm sure excited. all of them, quote unquote, but. Um, I know next week isn't really a tour, but I'm getting to do some really cool recording with some really exciting people. So I'm excited about that. Well, they might not be exciting people, but I'm a big fan. <laughs> they might be <laughs> enormous bores, but that's like, we're going to have to do another podcast uh, just to talk about whether they were bores or not. And then I can tell you who they were and if they suck. Um, but anyway, they're, they're not gonna, it's going to, it's going to be amazing and I can't wait. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I'm excited about all the shows. I just love connection. I just, I, I missed it when, when we weren't doing it, uh, oh, for that, you know, year and a half. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I know a lot of musicians are still holding off and I don't blame yeah. them at all. Sure. I went to, uh, um, you know, a like a seaside type music festival and that's where I got COVID. Um, oh, and so man. I think almost everybody there. So definitely. Um, but luckily it was Omicron. So it was, uh, not as severe and, and I'm vaccinated and boosted and all that. But anyway, um, no, I'm excited about everywhere. I, I have to say that that June part, that's when most of the shows are happening. And I'm looking forward to that the most because Henry's graduation will be over. So like my face, I can just put ice packs all, you know, it'll be healed up by then from the just laying on the floor, just crying. And then, uh, <laughs> And, uh, and then, you know, I just feel like June is just sort of the, it's, it's like a new chapter. That's when a new chapter starts. It's also the month of my birthday. My mom's going to come with me and yeah, things just feel good. And maybe even Henry will come, but he probably should be working. Doing some preparing for the yeah. CIA. For life. Or yeah. Some, yeah. Or that too. Yeah. yeah. No, that, that sounds like, look, it sounds like 2022 is going to be a nice year, you know, getting back into things. I pray so. Yes, right? it seems. Yeah. yeah, seems like it's so far so good. Okay, that's awesome. No, I'm I'm really I'll happy to it. hear that. Right? Yeah, yeah, I think we all need that. Um, yeah, for sure. And I and right? I uh, um, I think it was um, was the artist. Uh, yeah, I think his name is from San Francisco. It'll come. It'll come to me. But I he just did his first show, Matt. Uh, doesn't matter um okay. I, I he, he might prefer me not to talk about his name anyway um <laughs> but i he had not played any shows and has been really careful and has gotten kind of quiet on instagram and he's usually really really um you know just he's hilarious and making his fans laugh and really connects with people and i kind of noticed less and less and less and then the other night he posted at an after show, just sort of synopsis. And it made me cry. It was so sweet. And it was like, Aww. he forgot how incredibly important it is for him. And as well as, as hopefully, you know, your fan or whoever is coming to see you, but that, that connection for us, it's like, uh, you know, no matter who you are, or what you do, um, I think we all need it. But, um, but I know for me, it feels like an, an extension of my body. And, and when I don't have it, it's like something slowly being drained out of you. And so, so I can't pinpoint one show. I do get to go to New York city though. And I haven't been since all this started. So I I'm pretty excited to play. Oh yeah. Uh, to play there again. And, and I, I love the city. Um, so that's a great I'm city. Looking forward to that. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's a great city. Yeah, my friend and I were last night. In fact, we're just telling each other New York City stories back and forth. We're just going back. Yeah, you know, so oh, right. Uh, this one time, this one time I went here. You know, oh, that's so city. great. Uh, when yeah, you can I miss do it. that. Yeah, yeah, I miss that. I miss it. Yeah. I used to live uh, in Pennsylvania, like near Philadelphia. Okay. So we we're always going up to yeah. New York uh, all the time, just to that's shop, perfect. just whatever, just hang out, just whatever. yeah. Um, you know, I was going to ask you too about. Um, any sort of new music that you like that's out there of any other artist that you've been listening to or anybody you want to shout out? I'm trying you to know, think about I don't know. Can I talk about old music? Yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, Lee, you know what? There are rules. No, it's not that there's not great new music. I'm loving this girl, Sierra Farrell. Have you okay. heard? Did I say no. her name right? I don't know. Oh my she, God, I'm so bad. I think she's in Texas right now, maybe with um, a bunch of gals, but they um, like on a tour with a bunch of yeah. girls. But, uh, yeah, her name is Sierra Farrell, and I hope I'm saying that right. It's either Farrell or Farrell, but I, okay. Oh, I see. She's got like a tattoo on the side of her eyes. She kind of has like a gypsy look about her. Plays the fiddle i think and I, she probably plays everything and she's got this incredible like just folk voice so yeah, yeah so new music really into her okay. um i loved rodney crowell's latest record was it triage um i think that it was i don't know what's happening under here man i told you about the braids your hair looks great i think it looks cool with the beanie lot. and all that or yeah. there's it's been growing <laughs> yeah, I know we're talking about music right now, but it's been growing for so long. I got like a, I got a creepy little perm back in, <laughs> back in June and it has, and I thought it would have creepy maybe. little perm. Oh I did. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought it would help me oh, like throw, throw it out because it's too yeah. tempting when it's straight. For me to just start cutting bangs and then and then this comes in and then I look like He Man because my mom <laughs> says I have a <laughs> my mom says I have a thick neck. So you know that one that ah, you've seen that hey yeah 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 hey yeah yeah I said hey you know you've seen that four not bloods yes I uh, did you see the cartoon though no I don't know I, I don't think so <laughs> send it to you but it's oh a cartoon of he-man singing that singing that, with oh that my. haircut and that thick neck and every time i see it i'm like okay so that's why you've got this creepy perm <laughs> but it has got there's there's parts of the perm like it's mm. still it's, my hair naturally is really like soft and straight like stick straight but real you know it's fine so this perm has made it <laughs> something else, um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's long and there's <laughs> it's just everywhere. <sighs> and last night I was bored and uh, <sighs> I, uh, I, bra I just braided it all over, yeah. not cornrows because I'm not like, I'm not a genius, <laughs> yeah. but I braided it all over <sighs> just out of boredom and both the boys were making fun of me. <laughs> <laughs> But I took them out this morning thinking, oh, it's going to look like my hair's crimped and it, it looks like it's crapped. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, okay, so back to music. Anyway, I'm sorry. <laughs> back to music. No, I found this uh, this artist. Um, I forget uh, how I found him, but his name is John Martin. And he okay. passed away in 2008. And it's Martin with a Y. Okay. And he was um, English somehow, but, or I don't know, he's from up there. And uh, just the most experimental, like beautiful guitar stuff. There's a record of his called Solid Air that I have not, I really honestly have not stopped listening to for about two months. Oh, wow. And it's driving everyone I know crazy because <laughs> I'm, I'm in the, place where i'm forcing people to listen to it yeah yeah yeah, yeah you totally. know you get so yeah. excited and it's like it's not possible you're not gonna love this record um but you know i'm sure it's possible but i think that's what my neighbors thought when i was playing your song on repeat forever 
<laughs> Which just, God gave me horses or kids? Yeah, yeah, no, the God gave me horse. I'm. I swear, I I might have heard a couple knocks on my door, like, "Hey, dude, seriously, <laughs> fifteen times in a row." Hey, bro, that's a good song. Leave me alone. I get it. God gave you horses. <laughs> yeah. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> Leave me alone. I'm inspired enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I heard this great quote from really the oddest source about creativity and art. Because you were saying earlier about what, you know, you mentioned it in passing. Like, oh, what if art went away, right? Like this idea right. that art could go away, that, that sparked something. And he said, um, it was Neil deGrasse Tyson, of all people. Yeah. Right? I love that guy. I watch him I so much. Too. Yeah. Um, and he said, um, oh, what did he say? Okay, I want to make sure I get this right because it's so cool. Okay, if it, to be more creative, you need to be less productive. Mm. Because yeah. he meant like if you're so focused on, you know, getting these tasks done or these ta everything done, done, right. done you're never going to stop and be creative and come up with something new. Right. Um, I found that fascinating, to be honest with you. Yeah, I'm going to have to think about that. I, right? I think in my, I think it's absolutely true because I find myself doing all these little things all day and they're not little things. They're like our dryer's broken right now. So I have to keep going to the laundromat oh, God. and doing laundry. And that's not a little thing. It takes a long time. Yeah. I've got to get groceries and I, you know, got to keep, we've got animals. We've got a 12 year old St. Bernard that. Oh, wow. Um, you know, he's been in better shape and that it's just, I mean, you know, it's winter, it's hard with a giant dog that's having a hard time walking sure. on the ice. And so yeah. whatever, it's just, yeah, it, you're right. It's like the environment right now is sort of opposite of like, get the guitar out. Um, yeah. And conducive uh, to but, yeah, yeah writing something. I'll, sure. Maybe I'll take my guitar to LA next week and try to get some time. There you go. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, why not? Yeah, that we're solving problems here. Yeah, <laughs> solving problems. We're solving or, problems. Or I could start staying up all night, <laughs> huffing paint. I've never done that. <laughs> Is that what you do when you want to stay up? <laughs> no, we sure was like the the last. <laughs> Don't do that. Okay. <laughs> You're not good at this whole drug thing, Lee. I love it. You're not good at it. This is good. No, yeah. I have like silver or whatever pain I have around, like all yeah, the just... time. <laughs> I thought this was supposed to make me stay awake. I would never <laughs> even try it. It's oh, disgusting. Gosh. Oh, yeah. So destructive. No, no. Yeah. no, you got when you said that, it made me think of Steve O from Jackass because he used to do that all the time. And he would have paint all over him. So, I mean, just like you're describing, oh, it was like, oh, bro, dang. bro. But that guy turned it around. Speaking of the new Jackass movie just came out. Listen, I got to say, yeah. I, I, rec so I recommend it. Did you see it? No, but I laughed oh. so hard at the trailer for it. Oh, man. I saw the movie. I went to the theater. You did? With a buddy. Yes. And I, I, I'll be honest. I haven't laughed that hard. And I don't remember when. I, I, yeah. I laugh from from literally the first image to the last the whole oh time. I, it I'll was that later. Oh, it was so fun. <laughs> if you think the trailer's funny, oh man, it's yeah. the best one yet, in okay. my opinion. Because they'd also I don't really do some of the gross stuff. Like I'm not into some of that gross stuff. And they sort of removed all that in this one. Okay. This is and just, it's just funny. yes. Yeah, just real straightforward. Okay. Well, that's just good hilarious. Care. So, yeah, that would have kept me away. Like, oh, the rest is going to be disgusting. Um, totally. So, yeah, no, I don't need this to one's... see cars and people's bodies. <laughs> it's the it's the movie we re need right now because right. it doesn't matter what you believe, who you vote for, or whatever yeah. nonsense going on. You can laugh at this. Yeah, you know? exactly. This is Perfect. just complete. Just, just Primal. dumps fire. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Laughs. Just laugh. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Lee, is there anything um, we didn't bring up? Anything you want to mention before we go? Um, let's let's let people know how to follow you on social media for sure if they're I'm not already. A, I'm mostly present and uh, interactive on Instagram, and I'm Lee Bird Nash there. And then on Facebook, which I don't even think they let me on there anymore. My <laughs> uh, if, uh, oh no. Admins, well, Facebook will, but. Um, 
my management kind of controls that. Um, so, but that's Lee Bingham Nash, which I know is kind of confusing. Sorry about that. It's a decision I made years ago and, uh, whatever. Uh, but <laughs> Bingham is spelled B I N G H A M. So Lee Bingham Nash on Facebook and, um, Instagram. I'm Lee Bird Nash. And that's, that's the way to find me. Awesome. Awesome. Without a hat. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, go fix my yes. hair. <laughs> oh, I saw that post you put on Instagram asking for advice for <laughs> haircuts. And then the last picture I swiped to. Oh, man, that was so funny. You have such a great sense of humor. I got to say. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. I, I would just be that tough with, the, with the mustache, but <laughs> I, I can get it done. Yes. I can go get, just find some theater people. Give me the biggest mustache you got. <laughs> I gotta play the Opry tonight. I need a razor and some glue. <laughs> I'm playing the Opry tonight, guys. <laughs> Fix me up. <laughs> it works. It works. Oh man, that's too Thank funny. You yes, for guys. Me back on, man. Oh, this was so, so much fun. fun. Yes. Please follow Lee on, on Instagram for all the funny bits and clips of music. I mean, you get it all when you follow you on Instagram, Lee. So Thank you. That's the Thank good part. You. Well, yes, my best to you and um, you know, your family. Uh this tour's coming up. I'm super excited for you and I just I wish you the best uh with everything and you know if you ever come through dallas i'm going to see you a thousand All right. percent without a doubt i, will make I mean sure i let you know thank oh, you oh gosh so much. please please for sure and this uh again this podcast we're dedicated uh to uh to yes ruby to your grandma be. to ruby uh, yes yes thank absolutely so thank you, thank you so again much. lee all right take care stay healthy and safe yes you as well stay healthy and all safe right. we'll talk soon all right bye all right bye, -bye. Bye, bye the lone star play podcast is produced by texas real food Go to texasrealfood.com and you can search your city for stores, butchers, restaurants, farmers markets, and more who are using fresh, artisanal, organic sources. It's a fun site that brings all natural options all together. I hope you enjoyed this episode. For more information, visit our website, lonestarplate.show. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. Until next time.